This is Bill Farmer again. Welcome back to the McMaster University course, Computer Science 1JC3, Introduction to Computational Thinking. We're going to conclude today with the topic of three problem solving methods. We're going to look at the third method. This is a method I call Copy, Modify, Compare, and Generalize. So, this method is a three or a four step design process. You have a something you a problem you want to solve. Let's call that problem P. You want to solve P. So you copy the solution to a related problem. So let's say P is I would like to write a letter to a someone who I would like to be hired by. So what I do is I'm, I'm going to write a letter to company B and I find a letter I wrote to company A. That's what, this is what S prime is. It's my letter. And now what I do is I modify this And I get a letter. For company uh, B. And that's what S will be. So you've done this many times. You've done copy and modify. But now there's something else we can do, which is we're going to compare S prime and S. So, so I've taken A, I've copied it, I turned it into a letter for a company B, and while I'm copying it, I could have noticed there were some things in A that were mistakes, or there are some things that could have been done a little better, and I go and fix those. So there could be some things in here that I fix. So I compare these two. In a sense, I'm I'm using the situation with company B to go back to company A's letter and see how I could have improved that. And then what I do is I generalize. I come up with a new solution. And that basically has the best, it becomes like a template for both A and B. So this would be for some would be a template for some future company I want to apply to. So again, I start with a solution I already have. I modify it to get a new solution. I compare the two solutions. I improve my own solution. Then I generalize it and get a more general, a better solution that I can use over and over again. So the important thing here is that this approach, the CMCG approach, it trades short-term cost for long-term gain. What is the short-term cost? When I get B, I go back and compare it to A, and then I produce this X. But the thing is, X now is a more powerful template than I ever had before, and I can use it for solving future problems where I have to apply to future companies. Okay, so that's the idea. Modif we start we copy, modify, compare, and generalize. So I'm going to illustrate that on something uh, which I'm going to call super sum. So if you remember, we had this function called big sum. Big sum computes this. Computes this in mathematics. And it has three inputs, m, N and F. Notice I here is really a dummy variable. And here's the definition. You've seen it before. And you also know we can use the same form to compute big pi. We have M, N, and N. The difference, though, is we have to change the 0 to 1, and we have to change the plus to times. 
Now, the interesting thing is, if you think a moment, why is why was it zero for add and one for multiply? Well, it was zero for add, if we go back up here, this is, this is the additive identity. And what is zero? Zero is the multiplicative identity. And if we go up here and we look at, at the numbers, whatever these numbers are, I'll just say it, it could be it could be integer, whatever they are, if we go with zero and plus, this is a monoid. We just talked about monoids in our last lecture. And guess what? If we have integer, for instance, with 1 and times, this is a mono. Well, here's a third example. This third example is, well, now we have to change A, because if you, up here, up here we had this. We're assuming a was a member of the num type class. So we're going to change A to be string. We're going to change 0 to be the empty string. We're going to change plus to be string concatenation. And this works because strings I should I shouldn't just say string. This is a monoid. So you're probably going to guess that what we've what we've done here we could have started with this and then we copy and get this we can copy and get this but now we can compare and we can come up with a more general version which is what I'm going to call super sum well Let's just, we had big sum, big prod, big append, and now we have the most general form, super sum. And with super sum now, is this works for any type as long as the type is a monoid. And there is a uh, type class for monoids, which we're going to see in a moment. And instead of zero, we have m empty. That's the identity element for monoid. And then we have m append, that's the multiplication, the associative operation. So, so basically, we just have to make a small change. We, we add this, we change this to this, and change this to this, and now we have supersum. Supersum basically will work with any type that's a monoid type. So what is a monoid type? Well, it's, it's built starting with a semi-group type, and a semi-group type is just a binary operation. And then a monoid type is a, is a semi-group type, but it also has M empty and M append and M concatenate. So M concatenate basically concatenates everything in a list together. That's defined using a, a fold. Um, so that's what a monoid is. It's very similar to the theory. Remember, I had a theory of monoids. This looks like a theory of monoids, but the axioms are implicit. The axioms that we have for a monoid said that M a pen would be associative, and M empty is the identity element with respect to M a pen. Okay, so how would we actually do this to get the examples we just saw? Okay, so here's, here's super sum. There it is. That's all it is. Uh, and notice this works for any type that's a monoid type. And so we got to import monoid and data dot monoid data dot char. Uh, data dot char basically 
says that the string type is a modeling type. And so then I'm going to define a function called string from integer. It takes an integer and goes to a string. And then I have uh, string from integer is defined that if we give an argument n, it gets the in it, it, it gets um, the character uh, from n, or the integer, it gets the, um, it, what this is going to do is get the character that goes with n. Okay, so then when I apply super sum from 0, to 127, these are the indexes for the ASCII characters. And so then I do string from integer, it will give me back a list of the string, which is just going to be a character. And then super sum is going to put those all together, and th this is what it produces. It produces this string right here that starts here and goes here. And these are all the ASCII characters or their, ex or their representations of, well, like some of these have to be written like this because they have escape characters for things we can't print. Okay, so that's how we get the string example. How do we get the additive example? Well, the additive example has a problem because if we're talking about numbers, like we're talking, you know, if we go back um, up to this example. So here we're talking about the integers as the additive integers, you can think. And here we're talking about the multiplicative integers. Well, they're the same integers. We have to have some way to distinguish the two. So that's what we do here is we create a new type called additive. An additive just puts a uh, puts a construct um, a constructor on top of a. We can think of this as uh, a way of just marking a that we're going to think about it as an additive number. And then we have uh, yeah these are also called wrappers. We can think of putting a wrapper around the type a. And so then we have from additive, it takes the wrapper off. Um, so if we have a wrapper A, we just take it off. Then we have fun to additive. It takes a function and it produces a version of that function unadditive. So basically, F is going to be additive of F and in G. And so then we have to create an instance to show that additive A, when A is a member of num class, is an instance of modeling. That's what this says. And so non-empty will be additive 0. And then when we add additive X with M append of additive Y, that will be defined as additive of X plus Y. So this, this defines an empty and M append, and that gives us this instance. I, I should have come, had the whole thing. So now we can say from additive, well, first of all, we can say super sum 1 to 100 with that constructor, additive, and then we'll get an answer, and then we'll use from additive to take the wrapper off when we get the number we expect. Um, if we do the same thing, and we compute, we turn our function to an additive version of our function square, and then we're basically going to add the first, second, third uh, squares, we're going to get 14. Okay, so that's how we do additive. Multiplicative is essentially the same way, nothing really different. Here, if we put multiplicative here, uh, we're going to basically just multiply 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, we get 24. And that 
concludes this lecture and it includes uh, this topic. And um, just to remind you, if we go back to the top, we looked at three methods, these three right here, recursion and induction, little languages, copy, modify, compare, and generalize. And in my view, these are th three extremely powerful problem-solving methods. Okay, we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Goodbye.